In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to develop a material of a water pool with caustics inside of Blender with Cyclos. So, to develop this kind of project, I have here uh, other scene, more simple scene, with the same effect, worse camera, I know, but the same effect, and as you can see, it's working pretty well. Things that you need to know. Before we start, you need to know that you need to have a good topology for your, wa for your water. As you can see, I have a water with a lot of details. I have a, a monkey, the water is interacting with the water because I, I'm using some dynamic painting with the wave effect to bring more quality for my work. I'm also using some subdivision surface, some displacement, some display some the geometry to give more details as you can see i can increase the details if i want so you need to have a good topology for your water or you need to have at least a displacement a displacement node in your material but you can do in whatever way you want so let's get started first we will start by creating a new material this material we will start by creating a glass material with the water IOR. So press Shift A shader and let's add a glass shader. Let's plug it in and let's put the IOR in 1.333. This is the IOR, IOR of the water. As you can see, as we have a good topology, a good modeling process behind our water, the effect is looking great even though we just add one node here so the modeling process is responsible for a lot in this kind of effect okay the second part is to add some volumetrics to the water pretty standard stuff so we will add a shader and we we will we'll add and let's search because it's easier volume volume absorption so okay let's bring each it to one and let's plug it in the volume as you can see now the water is a bit more fully of stuff it does not look like it's it looks like it has a volume inside of that you can add a principal volume if you want the effect is is slightly different as you can see let's add here bring it up Point one. As you can see, the effect is slightly different, but I prefer to use, use the volume absorption because I think this preserves more of the effect of the caustics in the end of the process. Okay, done. We have two things done. The water is good, the volumetric, the volume stuff is good. Now what? What we need to do to, ins to input caustics on that? The Fury is simple. Blender has a feature, I don't know if it, if it is a bug, but it's a feature on the transparent shader node. So if I press Shift A, search by transparent, transparent, and plug it in the surface material, we have a transparent shader. So, but if we come here to uh, HSV and increase the value for something like 10, as you can see, for some random reason, the transparent shader starts to behave like a namesive shader when we go higher than one. What that means? That means that we can go crazy with that. So let's mix it up. Just press Ctrl zero and we'll mix up. Let's reset this value for one because we need to the transparent and let's separate the shadow of this process because we're gonna use the shadow to make this effect so press shift a let's come here to input light path here and let's select the is shadow ray and plug it in let's press ctrl h to hide the sockets that we are we are not using for now and right now we have this setup well now we can change the color of our shadow, which is interesting because we know that if you can change the color, we can change everything. So let's start by adding the nodes here. So to start with, let's come to our reference image. So as you can see, this is the effect of the caustics. So to replicate that, we can use something like a Voronoi texture because it's pretty similar, a Voronoi pattern. So let's come here to search. Voronoi and as you can see 
the Voronoi has a similar pattern here in these white lines, but this is not enough. So let's duplicate this Voronoi texture and now let's subtract one Voronoi texture on the other. So press Shift A, Converter Math, let's plug in and let's subtract it. Don't use Add, use Subtract. Now is subtracting the same thing, so one minus one equals zero. So you just are uh, you are just removing all the texture for itself. What is done? So let's change this from F1 for smooth F1. Now we have a better effect in our caustics. How can we improve it a bit more? So first let's add a value node and use this value node to change to change the scale because it's easier to change the scale by mess up with just one value than several different values so let's add a value node here to make our lives easier perfect now if we plug it in the transparent as you can see we are getting some effect here in the pool but it's not perfect right now so let's improve it a bit more the first thing that i would like to improve is our texture is looking flat looks looks like that everything is in the same plane and we when we look in the caustics pattern looks like something is passing up down everything is looking more 3d more dynamic and our effect is looking kind of boring you know so let's change it what i can do Let's recall, remove this by pressing Ctrl and left right mouse button. And let's duplicate that. Simple as that. <laughs> let's duplicate it and let's select these two shaders. Ctrl 0 to mix that up. And we now have two of the same effect. And here I can increase the value for 25. And now we have more like a dynamic pattern, as you can see here. The secret here is to come to the mix shader and reduce or increase to make some of the caustics be brighter and some be darker. In this way, it will look more natural and more dynamic, as you can see. I prefer to put something like 0 0.65, 0 0.67, I don't know. It's not that important to change this value to something exact. The important is to make it look natural. And right now, it's looking better. Not perfect, but better. Now, if we plug it here in the transparent, as you can see, things are starting to look interesting but we are just mess up with the shadows just the shadows are weird and blurry i don't know so we need to increase this value okay so first let's increase the the contrast between these parts what i like to do is reduce the smoothness for something like 0 0.3 0 0.3 is a, a uh, interesting value i realized that the 0.3 value is the best value for this case because when i press shift a in put a, co a converter color ramp let's see when i put a color ramp here i can bring it up slightly something like that and bring it down for here to make it more contrasted as you can see now i'm having more pronounced uh, effect so what we need to do here we need to run away of the spider web effect and look uh, and looks look for a uh, light effect for a effect that looks that's more similar to light not to a spider web or something like that so we gonna do is we we make this smaller and bigger and increase or reduce the value until we found a value that looks more like light i think this is perfect now as you can see this looks more like a rays of light with that, we have some values here. And now is the jump of the cat, as we say here in Brazil. Here in Brazil, we use this term. The jump of the cat is the way to do the things in the best way possible. So how to do the jump of the cat? We press Ctrl Shift A and let's add a math node. This math node will be a little bit different because we change the type from add to multiply and add. Why? Because if we multiply everything by zero, everything 
uh, everything multiplied by zero is just zero. Everything multiplied by one is just itself. And everything multiplied by five will be something brighter. And as I told you in the start of this tutorial, if something is above one in the transparent, sh in the transparent shader, it will become an emissive shader. So, as you can see, we have caustics in the bottom of our pool. <laughs> Does it look interesting for you? For me, looks really interesting. I am very proud to found the, this kind of thing, but we can improve it a little more. So it's great right now. It's looking really great, but there is two things that I like to tell you to pay attention when you are developing this kind of shader. First thing, the highlights of the caustics need to match the highlights of your objects. So put some object, some reflective object in your scene, come here to the color management tab, let's change it from filmic to false color, perfect, and now you need to increase the multiplier value until the caustics start to match the same exposure of your highlights in your scene, because if the caustics is not so bright, is not brighter or equal or brighter than the highlights on your scene, it will just it will just look off. So you need to increase this value to make it, it look more believable. Okay? So as you can see, the highlights are pretty much overexposed as my caustics effect. So when I start when I come back from false color to filmic, as you can see, it, it will look more natural. The last thing that I need to change is this part of the, the caustics is darker, is, pitch, is in pitch shadow. This is not possible because as you can see, caustics are lights that, that match each other in the bottom of the pool. So these lights are illuminating around it. So what you need to do, we, we use the second in input here. So we use the multiply and add for a reason, because we don't want to have these black spots. We want to have some more brighter spots in this way. Let's reduce it from for zero for a moment, just to show you how it will look. If we increase right now, as you can see, now the light is more pronounced on the surface of the pool. As you can see, it's looking even better and you can you can adjust it according to your reference image okay so i can use this reference image for example and okay i think it needs to be a bit brighter perfect now the caustics is perfect on my pool okay now if you think that is the end no if you want to get more quality here you need to add one detail to finish it so let's come back here to my previous scene as you can see and as you can see, there is something different here. If you look to the water, there is a lot of, of stuff hap happening here. And the caustics had a little bit of dispersion. This is because in my reference images, as you can see in these photos, I realized that there is some dispersion on the caustic lights. So to get this effect, what I want to do is simple. I want to change, I want to change the, the glass shader from a simple glass shader to a more uh, just perceive glass shader. So what I'm gonna do, just duplicate this three times, simple as that, make the first one red, the second totally green, third one, let's put it in full blue. Now let's add a shader and now you can reduce a little bit the IOR on the, the parts, on some parts of the node. So now I can put it here reduce the IOR, in the, the IOR in the first and increase in the other. And as you can see, we have now some dispersion. This dispersion is too much, I know. So to improve that, what I'm gonna do is simple. I'll just add a value node, put every value node in the IOR. And finally, I will add and subtract a little bit from, the, from this IOR. Né? The value will be 1.333, perfect. Let's press Shift A math node, search for a math node, I will duplicate it, the first will be in add, the second will be subtract, let's put everything in zero, and add a node 
another value node so we're gonna use press just one button which we, which will be easier so let's put it in point zero one one now this first one is adding the second one is subtracting and finally we have a believable caustics effect inside of blender using cycles without add-ons without different render engines everything done in cycles you can always adjust that you can always increase or reduce the values of the dispersion and make everything you want with this shader using another project saving your computer do whatever you want but also remember to subscribe in this youtube channel <laughs> and click the notification bell so every time i post a new tutorial about things re related of architectural visualization using blender you'll be awarded okay thanks for watching and i'll see you in our next video bye